What is going on, gang? We are back with an adult show tier list to switch things up a bit. And as your local show expert, I'll be more than happy to grade and rank a lot of these. Barack, being a snob who watches some episodes and reads recaps on Wikipedia or IMDb, does not make you a quote-unquote show expert. I literally only did that once, and it wasn't even for any of these shows. Yeah, yeah, tell it to somebody who cares. Barack, it's okay. Tell me because I care about you. Joe, stop acting like you actually care about anything Barack has to say. You're just on his good side right now because you're hoping he puts your favorite show up in S tier. What? Me? I would never do that because I know that Big Mouth is good enough to be in S tier without any of my help. Of course, that would be the show that you like most, Joe. The ones with the animated teens going through puberty and have some of the most questionable scenes in television. I take it that you get your rocks off on that show too, Barack? What? God, no. What the hell are you saying? Uh, I just don't even want you to expand on that whole statement. Let's instead go ahead and get started with the list. And up first, we got American Dad. Now, me, personally, I really like this show. Like, I see a lot of people arguing online that Family Guy is better or that American Dad is better, but quite honestly, I don't feel either way. I mean, it has Seth MacFarlane in both, so what's there to hate? And they're both good for different reasons. I think a solid A tier is in order for this. That's a super solid response to this whole thing, Barack. Great job. Shut up, Joe. That was the biggest non-answer ever. It's either American Dad or Family Guy. You can't say they're equals. Well, I technically never said that. I just said that I enjoy them equally. But enough of that, because after that, we got Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and this show belongs in C tier. I think even the biggest fans of the show would agree, or at least say it belongs in B tier. It's a great show if you're just choosing the best episodes from the series, but aside from that, it can just be the most random, incoherent show you've ever seen. Season four, episode five. Are you saying that's your favorite episode or something? Elaborate on that, Joe. Season four, episode five. Let me look this up. Uh, this is the hand banana episode. Tonight, you. Tonight, you. If you know, you know. Well, I guess we won't know because I don't think I want to watch that episode after seeing that short, creepy clip. Anyways, after that, we got Beavis and Butthead, and while I didn't like their show much, I did love the hell out of their movies, and honestly, these dudes were reaction YouTubers before that was even a thing, and I respect that and give the show a B tier. But let me just rip off the Band-Aid right now because we got Joe's favorite show up next, and I hate to tell you, Joe, but I have this dog water show going into D tier. I guess someone like you will never understand the intricacies of an amazing show like Big Mouth. There's so much beauty within it. See, there's just so many coming-of-age stories, especially today, that come off as incredibly pretentious while overtly romanticizing being in your preteen years and making it this big old hoopla. And you see, Big Mouth isn't that and often hits closer to home about those years with all the grossness and awkwardness that comes from those times. It has an accurate depiction of growing up in that age despite how cartoony it also is. Joe, you just like the fucking show because it has a character who fucks a pillow and has a pillow family with it, plus all those weird scenes with the teens that make it gross. I haven't even mentioned the hormone monsters and random dead ghosts within the show or God knows what the fuck else they have in that shit show. Donald, I actually could not have worded that better myself. Absolutely garbage show and Joe, your hard drives need to be checked. Thankfully, we got a damn palate cleanser up next because we got back to back-to-back S-tier entries, and I feel like these are all S-tier for different reasons. If you want a raunchy and hilarious time, then you watch Archer. If you want some family fun and just want to feel good, then you'd watch some Bob's Burgers. And if you hate yourself and want to feel like shit, then you go watch BoJack Horseman. So why the hell is that show all the way up in S-tier? Sometimes you gotta watch some real shows that make you feel this way. It's an amazing show, but when you watch it, you're just like, damn, I feel depressed. Real as fuck moment right there. Yeah, only real ones will get it. But anyways, after that, we got Daria, which is actually a spinoff from Beavis and Butthead. And this was a pretty damn good show. If you haven't checked it out, then I highly recommend it because I have it going into A tier. After that, we got Disenchantment. And unlike Matt Groening's other work, this is not really that good, but I'll still give it a B tier. Then after we got F is for family, and this honestly didn't do it for me. I saw a season and then had enough of the show, but I hear that people like this one, but unfortunately for Bombster Barry, he has to give it a C tier. Wait, hold on. What the fuck is that? You can't go giving yourself a nickname as fucked up as that. Who the hell names themselves after an explosive device, which by the way, you famously used to wipe out a ton of innocent lives? Well, I just wanted a cool nickname like you guys. 
What in God's green earth made you think that Bombster Barry was in any way okay when compared to something as fun and lighthearted like the Joe Dog or Donald's The Doninator? I was put on the spot, man. Truthfully, I probably could have done better than that. Whatever, because after that we got Family Guy, and I know you all remember how I said that I didn't think American Dad and Family Guy were equals. I lied about that because they're totally equal and this belongs in A tier. I knew that the non-answer at the beginning of the video was just you deflecting because you knew I was gonna call your ass out if you placed Family Guy in the same tier as American Dad. This is some goddamn bull, and you know that Barry, Family Guy literally pioneered modern day adult shows, and the fact that it is still airing just goes to show how good that show is. I mean, me personally, I prefer South Park, and it has been airing for just as long, and many would argue that it has been consistently better. Excellent point there, Joe, but we're not there yet. Anyways, after that, we got Final Space, and this is another B tier. It's a nice adult swim show, and I quite enjoyed it, but holy shit, guys, we got the back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back S tiers, and that, of course, is Futurama, King of the Hill, Rick and Morty, and lastly, Smiling Friends. Now, I know this was quite the range of shows because a lot of these are different in their humor and styles, and I am willing to hear out some people on placing Futurama and King of the Hill lower, but Rick and Morty and Smiling Friends are simply too elite and belong there no matter what. Rick and Morty is good as hell, and seasons one through three are simply elite, and you can hate the fan base, but not the show. Smiling Friends is a newer show, but goddamn does it bang, and new episodes are airing on Adult Swim every Sunday starting now, as of this upload date. Now let's talk about Futurama. Well, I think this is the best of Matt Groening's work, and that may be a bit of a spicy take. But hell, this is my list, and King of the Hill is the best laid back and relaxed type of show. It's hard to explain what makes it so amazing, but once you get it and it all clicks, you see it all and realize why this show is simply elite. Now I like King of the Hill, but S tier is reaching pretty fucking far, man. See, you think I'm reaching, but just trust me and give it a rewatch. Hunter tells me that it is an amazing show to watch under the influence. The influence of what? Whatever you got on you, I guess. Okay, definitely not, because it's a great show either way. Following that, we got Robot Chicken, and this is a B tier for me because it has pretty good moments, and the Star Wars specials were good too. This next one is one that I know for sure will get me crucified by everyone because I have The Simpsons going into A tier. Now I know the older seasons are simply elite, but that won't let me overlook the stank-ass seasons that are still premiering. This show is like an old family pet that everyone is keeping alive, even though everyone knows that it would be better off dead. Unfortunately. Jesus Christ, man. That's dark as fuck, and who the hell wants their family pet to die? They want them to live as long as they possibly can. Okay, but I was saying it as if it was suffering in this scenario, so, you know, death is better for it. What kind of monster makes this fake hypothetical where his pet is suffering? Okay, forget that whole thing because we're grading South Park next. And unlike The Simpsons, this is a show that is still just as good and maintains a steady stream of good episodes no matter what. And this belongs in S tier. It still remains culturally relevant and who the hell doesn't like Randy Marsh or Cartman? Anyways, after that we got the Boondocks and everyone loves this goddamn show. This is a certified S tier and I implore everyone here to give this show a watch if they haven't already. Matter of fact, just check out every damn show in S tier, please, because these are all wonderful pieces of adult animation, and they are just so damn funny, except for BoJack Horseman, but it's still great. Of course, you of all people would put the boondocks in S tier. What the hell is that about? It's a great piece of adult animation. See, you mess me up every time you say adult animation, because when you say that, I automatically think of hentai. Real as fuck, Joe. No, that is not real as fuck. His mind is actively consuming brain rot with all the type sewage that Joe watches after hours. Following that, we got The Cleveland Show, and this goes into an immediate D tier because this is certified garbage. Wow, I actually didn't see that coming. I thought this was a black family guy, so uh, I figured that, you know, this would be up higher for you. Your stupidity never surprises me, but I mean, I guess they tried selling it off as that, but it sucks so much. Anyways, our last two are somewhat unknown, at least they were to us when we saw them, but The Midnight Gospel is a solid B tier, and it's a nice sort of animated podcast of types, if that makes sense, and the same goes for the Ricky Gervais show as well, but this is an A tier, 
in my book. Keep in mind, though, that these are both basically podcasts, but Midnight Gospel is less of that. But personally, I'm a sucker for Ricky Gervais and really liked his stuff, so that's probably why I liked it more. I mean, I like his stuff, but I personally wouldn't suck the man. What the fuck?